Welcome to Politics Unplugged. I'm Ann Trujillo. This Labor Day weekend, we're catching up with two members of Colorado's congressional delegation with two very different perspectives. Democrat Jonah Goose represents Colorado's 2nd Congressional District, a freshman member of Congress who took office just eight months ago. We're going to start with Republican Congressman Scott Tipton. He has represented the 3rd Congressional District for eight years. We talked about gun violence, protecting the outdoors, and getting reelected. You're up for re-election 2020, and it's a big year. Uh, Senator Gore, Cory Gardner's seat, he's up, um, the president, and so forth. So knowing what we saw in 2018, how does that change your strategy for, um, for your re-election re plans? You know, our focus is really on our district and our, our people. Um, one thing that I always like to be able to point out is, is uh, we've had a tale of two economies in Colorado. The metropolitan area has done well, some of our resort communities have done well, but uh, as you get down to Pueblo, over to Walsenburg in the San Luis Valley, up and down the west slope of Colorado, we really hadn't felt the economic recovery. We are now starting to be able to see uh, business prosperity increasing, jobs that are starting to be able to be created. So we're focused on the jobs and, and the issues that are going to be important to our communities. Health care for our veterans, uh, health care, frankly, in rural Colorado, which is always challenged as well, simply with the number of providers that are going to be there. Uh, to be able to address issues on our public lands, our access to them, responsible energy development. Uh, that's going to be our focus, and it's uh, not so much the politics, but our people who live and work there. I, I know the president's trade war with China has, has a lot of people on edge right now. So mm -hmm. what are you hearing from your constituents about the effects of that? You know, we had some concerns, uh, certainly out of Evers Steel. Uh, in regards to some of the steel tariffs, we'd reached out to Secretary Ross, and fortunately we were able to get some exemptions uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we're going to be able to get that steel and to be able to have it affordable here to be able to create those jobs. We have some agricultural interests as well. Right. Uh, actually flows not out of uh, the deal with China, but with the USMCA, uh, out of the potato growers that are down in the San Luis sure. Valley. Uh, to make sure that we're going to have the opportunity to be able to sell those uh, potatoes down into Mexico, and then also the cattle industry uh, that uh, we need to be concerned about for some export opportunities for them. And as uh, we look throughout Colorado and we get out into the uh, Great Plains, uh, you know, with uh, a lot of the wheat, the barley, and whatnot that's growing here as well. So, what assurances can you can you give them then, as they as they look at these talks, wondering? Right. What's going to happen? Well, you know, my position is uh, I, I want to be able to have free trade but fair trade as well. Uh, you know, when we look at the Chinese, no question, uh, stealing intellectual property, they've been dumping steel into the United States, uh, irrefutable that that's been the case. So we need to stand up for our businesses, for our people, for our options uh, to be able to make sure our economy is going to be strong. Uh, and uh, it's part of a negotiation that uh, has to be taking place. Uh, but we also have our European counterparts, uh, the rest of Asia to be able to deal with, Australia as well, uh, that uh, we need to make sure that we have it on. Uh, we know we aren't going to be able to get everything that we want, uh, but I think it's fair to be able to re-examine these trade negotiations. Congress is basically in an approval mode. Uh, USMCA uh, will be waiting for Speaker Pelosi to be able to bring that to the floor know that uh, on, on the Democrat side there's some concerns and, and a couple on the Republican side, but uh, you don't want the 535 members of uh, the House and the Senate uh, to be negotiating the actual trade agreements. That'll be an executive branch issue, but the input that we can provide out of our individual districts I think is critically important to those negotiations. Uh, I know you've, um, you've come up with a bill, the Colorado Rec Act, to address public land issues. Mm -hmm. I know that's, that's a huge part of, of your district. Explain how that works and explain the difference between the, the REC Act and the, the CORE Act. Why not support the CORE Act? Well, uh, what we're doing on the REC Act, uh, and it's a draft piece of legislation right now, uh, we put it out in front of the people in our district before we've even shown it in Congress uh, to be able to go before committee. It is third congressional district specific. Uh, the CORE Act actually is broad encompassing uh, legislation that includes a number of bills. We're focused on the 3rd Congressional District. Uh, some of the differences that we certainly have are going to be some of the grazing issues, which are not fully protected uh, within the CORE Act. Uh, we have the high altitude training, 
uh, which is critical for the nation's defense. In fact, I passed a resolution just recently through the House of Representatives that passed with bipartisan bi bipartisan and broad support, recognizing the importance of that for our military and for the security of the United mm. States. Uh, we also have uh, some interest out of uh, some of the off-road vehicles and snowmobilers in terms of the core act issues. So we're dealing with this and holding roundtables currently throughout our district. Uh, just had one down in Alamosa. I'll be in Rifle a little bit later uh, to be able to have another round table down there. Was down in Durango for a round table, going through our district to be able to hear the various concerns and, and all of the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a lot of commonality in the third congressional district. We love our public lands, we want to be able to protect them, and we also want access to those public lands as well. And uh, we are going to be addressing uh, within uh, the REC Act as uh, we continue to go through uh, the draft legislation and be able to hear this feedback uh, about the threat of forest fires and treating some of the uh, wilderness areas as well. I have to ask you, uh, gun, gun law issues have come up in, in uh, in so many different scenarios. Do you think Congress has a role in reducing gun violence? And uh, what would that be? I think uh, as a society, we have an obligation uh, to be able to deal with this. And uh, the one issue that I hope to have a lot more conversation on, just had a few visits earlier today uh, with people is in regards to mental health. Uh, as a society, what did we do uh, that was so wrong that all of a sudden this becomes an outlet uh, to be able to have these mass tragedies that are going on when they never ever used to happen before. And we had guns uh, that were there. Uh, so a lot of mental health issues, uh, talking uh, to our families in terms of uh, awareness of issues and uh, building that family structure again. And how do you so, feel about background checks? You know, uh, here Stricter in Colorado, we have, uh, you know, the, the universal background checks. Uh, we'll always want to be able to look uh, speculation in terms of what's always in legislation uh, to be able to look at. None of us want to be able to have guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. And, so a red uh, flag, where do you Well, uh, do you, you know, that? red flag needs to make sure that it's always protecting also something that is integral to the American system, and that's called due process, hmm. uh, to make sure that uh, you don't have somebody just assign something and uh, you pay a consequence and have to prove yourself innocent, if you will, to be able to address that. So are you prepared to make, to, to address any changes in our gun laws right now? You know, uh, we'll see, uh, we're having conversations currently uh, you know, we're in what's called the August break, the recess for Congress to be out. Uh, there are a couple of pieces of legislation that are being uh, discussed uh, in a tentative fashion right now until we get back to Washington. And uh, it's always important to be able to look at the legislation and to be able to see where there's an appropriate role to play. So you're willing to consider huh? changes? Well, uh, I think that we all want to make sure that we are ending gun violence in this country. This should not happen. Uh, we ought to be able to go to our schools, to our shopping areas, and also to be able to be safe in our homes and to be able to protect the Second Amendment. Congressman Tipton, thank you so much for taking time to, to be here with us here in you Denver bet. and uh, enjoy your time in Colorado before you head back to Washington. You bet. Really right. a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll hear from Congressman Jonah Goose when we come back.